economic crisis has been created by first creating an illusion of wealth in financial transactions, forgetting the real wealth is in the land and in the soil, in the biodiversity. A real wealth is the well-being of communities, and well-being of communities comes out of living economies where everyone is involved at the local level, doing some creative work or the other. The putting of wealth into the financial casino is what made that bubble burst. And now, having created the economic crisis, those who gained from that economic crisis want to gain perpetually by not just creating fictitious money, but by wanting to control every aspect of life so that for the air we breathe, for the food we eat, for the water we drink, we pay them rents and royalties. All of the aspects that make life possible are commons, they are the public good. Seed is a public good and a commons. Water is a public good and a common. The way we share our knowledge and generate knowledge is a public good. Even the land is a public good because it's only when territories are treated as a common heritage are they protected. There might be a patch that's owned by a person, but that ownership doesn't give the right to destroy that land. The community is the overall guide to how, what seeds will be planted, how the landscape will be managed, so that the overall good of the community is served even through the land as a commons. Why are they so desperate to privatize? The first reason is that as the economy collapses, people will turn to their own resources and their own knowledge to build their own economies. We have lived without Wall Street in most parts of the world, and we can kill create a future without Wall Street. But we can't create a future without land, and we can't create a future without seed. And they would like to control and kill that alternative so that in our daily lives we are generating profits and money for them. If every seed is patented, Monsanto gets royalties. But who pays for this? The farmer. If they're too poor to pay, what happens? India is a very good example. 284,000 farmer suicides in the last two decades since the seed became private property in the hands of Monsanto. We can see what it does to water. Prices go up. The poor can't afford clean water because they can't pay for it. They drink contaminated water, cholera epidemics in South Africa. Death is a consequence of the privatization of resources of the earth that make life. Because privatization means if you don't have money and purchasing power, you don't have the right to life, you don't have the right to life, death is the inevitable thing. So privatization of the earth's resources is a project of genocide. And that's why I fought it, and I fight it, and I will, I will continue, until my life's breath. I think the first thing is, farmers need to get out of this economic crisis by becoming free of the inputs that come from that commodity market world. So they should stop doing chemical fertilizers, they should do organic. They should stop buying purchased seed and start their own community seed bank and recover seed as a commons. Communities should start protecting their water resources so that they can go and drink straight from a stream and don't have to buy those one euro bottles which are then thrown away and pile up as garbage in the world. But because the dominant system knows people will do this and are doing it, they will try and criminalize it they will pass laws to say you can't save your seed. Sorry, you can't drink water from a spring. You can't do organic without our permission. We know how to deal with that and we were taught by Gandhi. Gandhi had said, as long as unjust laws are obeyed, so long slavery exists. And he called the non-cooperation with unjust laws, Satyagre, the fight for truth. For the survival of humanity, the moment has come for everyone in their everyday lives to act through Satyagra, the fight for truth, the truth of life, the truth of freedom.
One scientist's statement that they are withdrawing from um, Europe is a lie. It's a lie because they are more aggressive than ever before in Eastern Europe. I, have, I get invitations from Croatia, from Poland, from Serbia, from Bulgaria, where they're saying Monsanto is on such an aggressive. Mm. And they find one or two ministers whom they bribe to push GMOs. So it's not true that they are leaving Europe, they are aggressive in Europe. But they're not just aggressive by pushing GMOs in Eastern Europe, they're aggressive by trying to change the seed laws so that open pollinated local seeds that allow organic farming are not available. People will be forced to buy seeds. Today it will be hybrid, tomorrow it will be GMOs. They want to create a seed famine in Europe and through the seed famine control the agriculture of Europe. That is what the May 6th draft of the European Commission law on seed, which is on plant propagating material, is about. It's a Monsanto law. It should be recognized as a Monsanto law and it should not be allowed to pass, and if it passes, it should not be obeyed. The first argument on pushing GMO seeds and pushing patented seed and seed certification of the kind the European law tries to do is that this is an answer to food security and hunger. Uh, that's not true for two reasons. First, uniform seed grown in monoculture produces more commodities, but it does not produce more food. If you measure a farm which is diverse, the output of food and nutrition on a diverse farm is higher than in a monoculture farm. So their argument works in what I call the monoculture of the mind, but it fails in a diverse world. The second reason why their argument is not true is commodities are not food. 90% of the corn and soya is not eaten by human beings. It goes for biofuel and animal feed. Only 28% of the food in the world comes from industrial farming. 72% comes from small farms. The majority of the food comes from real farming. What the industrial system is producing is non-food commodities. And it's only by creating myths, creating blindness, creating illusions that they keep attacking the truth and the reality that the earth is abundant, when we work in friendship with the earth, we produce more food. You know, when the World Trade Organization was established as the constitution mm -hmm. of the world economy, based on free trade, which is based on corporate control, uh, we coordinated around the world, we created something called the International Forum on Globalization. The top activists from every, across the world became one. And coming together, we were able to stop the World Trade Organization in Seattle. That was the big battle of Seattle, 99. We shut it down. Then they started to say the anti-globalization movement were terrorists. Activists were killed in Genoa, fighting against globalization. 9-11 uh, happened and they wrote, Zolik wrote an article saying the terrorists who brought down the trade center and the activists who challenged WTO and free trade are the same thing, there's no difference. Some activists got afraid. Meantime, the destruction we had projected and said would happen has happened. When we were saying this will go wrong, people didn't believe it. I had written an article in the early 90s saying WTO is a death knell for farmers. Today 284,000 Indian farmers have committed suicide. 15 million have been pushed out of farming since WTO started. This experience is here in Europe. Globalization has brought down ancient societies and are telling the Greeks and the Italians and the Spanish and the Portuguese, privatize your last resources. So today, we have the experience of the harm of globalization. And the real fight against globalization today 
is building local economies. If laws come in the way, we'll have to say sorry. The law of our community, the law of the commons, the law of the earth is the law that we will follow if there is a future. The law of WTO is a law written by Monsanto, by a Cargill, by a General Electric. Sorry, corporate rule is a corporate dictatorship. Dictatorships should not be allowed to grow. So globalization in today's time will be fought through localization, not as a word, not as a rhetoric, but as a practice in everyday life. goddess of learning, Saraswati. What globalization is, does is create the rule of ignorance and stupidity. Yes. And we need to turn back to Saraswati. Mm -hmm.